old iron. One day, James had to wait at Edward Station until Edward and his train came in. This made him cross. Late again, he shouted. Edward only laughed, and James fumed away. Edward is impossible, he grumbled to the others. He clanks about like a lot of old iron, and he is so slow he makes us wait. Toby and Percy were indignant. Old iron, they snorted. Slow. Why, Edward could beat you in a race any day. Really, said James huffily. I should like to see him do it. One day, James's driver did not feel well when he came to work. I'll manage, he said. But when they reached the top of Gorn's Hill, he could hardly stand. The fireman drove the train to the next station. He spoke to the signalman, put the trucks in the siding, and uncoupled James ready for shunting. Then he helped the driver over to the station and asked him to look after him and find a relief. Suddenly the signalman shouted, and the fireman turned around and saw James puffing away. He ran hard, but he couldn't catch James and soon came back to the signal box. The signalman was busy. All traffic's halted, he announced at last. Up and down main lines are clear for 30 miles, and the inspector's coming. The fireman mopped his face. What happened, he asked. Two boys were on the footplate fiddling with the controls. They tumbled off when James started. I shouted at them and they ran like rabbits. Just let me catch them, said the fireman grimly. I'll teach them to meddle with my engine. Both men jumped as the telephone rang. Yes, answered the signalman. He's here. Right, I'll tell him. The inspector's coming at once in Edward. He wants a shunter's pull on a coil of wire rope. What for? wondered the fireman. Search me, but you better get them quickly. The fireman was ready and waiting when Edward arrived. The inspector saw the pole and rope. Good man, jump in. We'll catch him, we'll catch him, puffed Edward, crossing to the upline in pursuit. James was laughing as he left the yard. What a lock, what a lock, he chuckled to himself. Presently, he missed his driver's hand on the regulator and then he realized there was no one in his cab. What shall I do? He wailed. I can't stop. Help, help. We're coming, we're coming. Edward was panning behind with every ounce of steam he had. With a great effort, he caught up and crept alongside, slowly gaining till his firebox was level with James's buffer beam. Steady, Edward. The inspector stood on Edward's front, holding a noose of rope in the crook of the shunter's pole. He was trying to slip it over James's buffer. The engine swayed and lurched. He tried again and again. More than once he nearly fell, but just saved himself. At last. Got him, he shouted. He pulled the noose tight and came back to the cab safely. Gently braking so as not to snap the rope, Edward's driver checked the engine's speed. James's fireman scrambled across and took control. The engines puffed side by side. So the old iron caught you after all, chuckled Edward. I'm sorry, whispered James. Thank you for saving me. That's all right. You were splendid, Edward. The fat controller was waiting and thanking the men warmly. A fine piece of work, he said. James, you can go rest and then take your train. I'm proud of you, Edward. You shall go to the works and have your worn parts mended. Oh, thank you, sir, said Edward happily. It'll be lovely not to clank. The two naughty boys were soon caught by the police, and their fathers walloped them soundly. They were also forbidden to watch trains so they could be trusted. James's driver soon got well in the hospital and is now back at work. James missed him very much, but he missed Edward more. 
and you will be glad to know that when Edward came home the other day, James and all the other engines gave him a tremendous welcome. The fat controller thinks he will be death for weeks.